Well, hello there, person. Check this out. Got Wraithbinder running with the double eleven engine. This is um, this is an ultimate moment right here. Very proud of this work here. Um, this is a really good thing for players, for my publisher, and for me. Um, it's great for players because this is allowing. Wraithbinder to run with DirectX. So on Windows, um, it used to use uh, the Cocos 2D engine, which is which used OpenGL. Uh, so now it can run on OpenGL or it can run on DirectX. In fact, what it's doing is it's using uh, a game engine layer. Um, well, it's using Cocos 2DX basically as a layer inside. So there's basically there's Wraithbinder which runs on top of Cocos 2DX, which runs on top of the Double Eleven engine. So uh, back with Songbringer, um, what what uh, my publisher and I did was we created a, um, what my publisher did was they went and took, uh, they just basically tore apart Cocos 2DX and put in just the important parts into, they injected Double Eleven's engine into Cocos 2D. So basically there's like this Cocos 2D layer that um, had all double eleven uh, mechanics and bindings and engines and workings going on underneath it, right? So uh, over time, what happened is that kind of got uh, out of sync with Songbringer source code. So when Songbringer was actually released, um, we had both um, we had both the uh, the Cocos 2DX version that they created, and then this other sort of branched off version of Cocos 2DX that I was using that was updated. So these two were not in sync, and um, and it it would it created a lot of friction, and when going to release Songbringer on multiple different platforms. So why is this good for you as a player? First of all, um, it'll be using DirectX on Windows. So there's a lot more compatibility going on with uh, DirectX versus OpenGL. Some of the OpenGL drivers are not uh, compatible with, you know, with Windows anymore, and sometimes they they're not up to date. But the DirectX ones are the most up to date because they're Windows and they're made by Microsoft and all that. So that's a great thing for you. But another thing is that it's going to create a lot less friction when we go to uh, make this a multi-platform thing or uh, not just multi-platform, but like multi-platform with consoles type of game, right? When we go possibly to release this game on Nintendo Switch or Xbox or PlayStation or something like that, um, that, can, that process takes a lot of programmer time. And um, that programmer time is something where you're, you're as, a, as, as the leader of the project myself, um, it takes away from the creativity, right? So if you're so right when the game's getting into beta and you're a player playing Wraithbinder and you get to provide feedback and you're saying, hey, there's this thing that's broken. I really want you to fix this. Or hey, I got a great idea. Can you do this cool thing? And um, if I'm just swamped with bugs at that point because there's like two huge different layers I have to work with underneath of all of Wraithbinder, then that's just a huge impact impediment to creativity so having this, this this is so awesome having this all working now with the double eleven engine means that I don't have to worry ever again about these all these different issues where we had one different version of uh, Songbringer doing this and one version doing that now Wraithbinder is gonna be this one cohesive thing friggin awesome so why is this good for my publisher? Because they don't have to do tons of work to get this game running with their engine. It's already running with their engine. And um, so basically this is great for players, it's great for me, and it's great for Double Eleven. And um, yeah, so let's, I mean, let's check this out a little bit, right? Let's run this here, we're running on uh, Windows 10. I got this in a, um, a Parallels virtual machine running, so it's not, not as fast as it should be, but still, I think we're getting 60 frames a second. Let's see if we get it while we're, uh, um, yeah, we've been getting 60 frames a second while, while recording a video right now. That's freaking awesome. So 
this is running with DirectX. We've got Direct3D 11 in the background running it. There's a few issues yet, yet left to solve. For example, the triangles, I haven't got those quite working. So basically there's supposed to be a high res model going on here where you can see the high res model of your player, your character I mean. Uh, that's almost working. There's just so much stuff that I'm kind of glossing over though. Like for, for the longest time, the entire background of the game was black. You couldn't see, everything was black. Um, there's still an issue where uh, there's supposed to be um, these vertical faces going on underneath the character right here. Uh, we're, we're standing on this sort of platform. There's supposed to be a vertical face right there. That's invisible right now. That's something I need to work on. Um, for the longest time, I couldn't get sh uh, the clouds working, uh, but I got those sort of like... See, I created a workaround for that. I'm still trying to figure out why the heck there's just one little bug where I couldn't get the clouds to work, but that's almost there. Um, the shaders are not quite right, so they're a little bit dark, you can see, and they're a little bit too blue colored right here on on, uh, on this, but that's this is, we're talking leaps and bounds better than it was at first, right? At first the, the shaders weren't even working at all, because I had to create all these HLSL versions of all the shaders, so before um, Songbringer was entirely, or sorry, Wraithbinder was entirely uh, GLSL, because we're using OpenGL only. Um, but now, uh, now that we have this DirectX version, we have GLSL and we have HLSL shaders. So they're, they're a little bit different. Um, there's still some quirks and gotchas and issues and things like that I'm dealing with with the shaders. But uh, like I was just saying, there's really a lot, a lot of it's done. So the shaders are almost there. And um, there's been several other things dealt with. Gosh, I even had to get input working, for example, for for the when I first got it running with the double eleven engine, I had to kind of rewrite the way that all the input worked. So um, that's kind of nice that that's working. Um, uh, what else? Gosh, there was a letterboxing issue where at first um, the whole screen was a was letterboxed on Windows, and I couldn't figure out why for the longest time. But then I finally figured out it was basically just limiting its aspect ratio. It looks like we might have crashed. Oh shoot. Yeah, we got we hit some break point or something like that. And it's probably going to make me have to log out to fix this cuz I'm running it in full screen. Yeah. Oh, can't even control the delete out of this one. Okay, well, anyways. Anyways, I've talked enough about this this is a really cool foundational thing, right? This is gonna this is gonna smooth, make it so smooth and easy to release this game and to make it good for for players. So I can't wait to till uh, it gets to the point where we can really start seeing the benefits of this. But for now, it's really cool to have this foundation in place. So thanks for watching this video. We'll catch you on the next one. And uh, Wizard Fu signing out.